Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> I'm working on Callie's uh, pet portrait for her family. It's coming along. The video should be out in a few weeks. Uh, if you want to see, I'm doing three 16 by 20 pet portraits and Zoe's is done. I think it'll post before this video. You can check it out or keep an eye out for it if it's gonna post just after this video. Okay, I'm digressing. I need to paint some bumblebees. They sell well for me. They bring in a little bit of income, which I need. Um, and I've also noticed on YouTube that you guys are watching, there's two bumblebee videos, one with a with a traceable and one that's, oh, oh, it's this one. <laughs> I forgot I had a prop on. <laughs> um, so uh, let's get started and have some fun painting another bee. Okay, I've got a couple little four inch by four inch canvases ready. They're, gosh, I, think, I always say they're an inch and a half thick. I've never measured. Yeah, they're an inch and a half thick. They're from Michaels. Um, I've sprayed them with water. Oh, here, I've got another couple here. So I show you in a video, but I spray them. I was gonna show you, I guess. I spray them with water and then dry them with a hair dryer or let them just air dry. So that's pretty much the other video. <laughs> oh, I think in the video I show about getting dents out and how how long it can take. I think there's some other tips in that video too. I don't think I just ruined that video. Um, I wanna write love. I think I want a pink background. So I was looking at my bumblebee paintings in my online gallery. Um, and I really don't have one with a pink background. I don't have one with a red background. But I'm thinking pink will work uh, better. Oh, these are watercolor pencils. They're also from Michaels. I love Michaels. They have great coupons. Um, I get a senior discount. Yay. <laughs> um, now I'm going to cough. Okay, guys, I didn't cough. So I thought this might be interesting. So what I did was is I just traced around my canvas to figure out. I knew I wanted another zooming bee. I have a, oh, the t-shirt I showed you in the intro. Um, it's a, I think that's the first time I painted a bee zooming, which I really liked. So I wanted to do another zooming bee. I made it a little more round, but I thought I would tell you. So then I just traced the canvas and I divided it in thirds and then I divided it in thirds horizontally. So thirds vertically, thirds horizontally. And then, so I put the bee on one of the thirds. And so it's a great, simple trick. Some people call it a rule, but I think in art you can break every rule that there is to put your focal point on one of the thirds. And then I was thinking, ah, let's have that be looking down into the other third. So I've got two of my clovers split here. And so you kind of get, and then I've got taller on the sides and they bend in a little bit and look in. And then it kind of comes down and just you know, makes basically, you can make it literally an arch shape. So you kind of get this kind of movement and interest to keep the viewer in the painting. So that's just a little design, painting des bumblebee design 101. And then I just took this and made it traceable for you guys. I have one other bee traceable. I'll put the link in the description. Um, I don't know how many bee videos I have. I'll have to put that info in the description. So I'm gonna go to time-lapse here and paint some pink backgrounds. Oh. You're gonna to want to know colors. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm thinking. Oh, and then I bought a new brush. I don't know if you're like me, but when I go to any art store, I was just at Michael's the other day. I bought a couple of frames, and so I bought a new. Oh, I can't read it. I just have my glasses updated. Oh, it's a three-quarter inch. I know it's a Royal Langnickel. Oh, Zen. Zen is the line. It is so nice. <laughs> I love buying art supplies. It makes me happy. Okay, so I've got a light portrait pink, which I think is really close. I think this is the pink they replaced, replaced it with. Light pink, they're super close. Um, you can take red and add white to it. Um, 
I have some other pinks here. Here's another one. Medium magenta. Just use whatever you have. I'm gonna play a little bit. Um, you, of course, could paint a green background. You know, have fun. There's no, no one standing there saying, you have to do it like I do it. And you don't want to. And then even if you try to do it like I do it, it's not gonna turn out quite the same. Uh, we all have our own handwriting. Right off, the, right off the bat, if you're brand new to art, you still have your own handwriting. So I'm just putting some pinks out. Oh, this is um, quinacrid quinacridone magenta, which is a, oh, I should do a video on purples. It's a great, my favorite daughter reminded me the other day, it's a great um, color to use when you're trying to mix purples. Because sometimes the red reds and the blues, like I have an ultramarine green shade, and then when I mix it with red, I don't quite always get the purple I'm looking for. Um, but quinacridone, try it with your blue if, if uh, your reds aren't working. It can really save the day. So I'm putting out, I'm probably putting out way too, well, I'm gonna paint a couple of canvases, so maybe this isn't too much paint. Plus, if you put out bigger blobs, um, I, I hope you can't hear it, but I've got a fan blowing into my studio. Um, you can still poke in and get fresh paint, even if it skins over the top. And then I'm gonna put out some neutral gray, which I don't know. So that's burnt sienna. I don't know if I said that. No, yeah, maybe I'll just put out some white and we'll see. I don't think I really need the gray or some black. So that's titanium white. Okay, now we're gonna start the, now that you know the colors, and then I might pop in some neutral gray five or some black. Mar I have Mars Black in my studio. I'm gonna paint some backgrounds on the time lapse. tip. So I mixed up quite a bit of paint as you saw because I'm painting four of these canvases and this is the canvas that I sprayed wet to show you how to shrink up a canvas. It's still a little damp and that can help you. So you spray a lot of artists, acrylic artists will spray the back of a canvas and then they'll do it um, as needed. Now you don't want to soak it. I'm trying to tell you how much. So it's damp and you spray the back of the canvas so that when you're painting there's a little bit more moisture on your canvas and it can make it easier to blend so sometimes um i'm in a couple beginner acrylic painting groups on facebook and i think how fast acrylics dry frustrate sorry guys getting dry frustrate uh, new painters so a lot of times i'll just paint like the top half of this and then dry it with a hair dryer so it's surface dry and then paint the bottom half so I have something to hang on to. But I'm also digressing. Um, getting, moistening your canvas with a little bit of water um, on the back can be a great trick. You can moisten it on the front too. Um, but I was noticing how this was spreading a little bit easier because my canvas is wet. So I think, <laughs> did that make sense? I get a little off track. I think that made the point there. I wanted to pop in with that art tip. Oh. Hey, favorite daughter, she edits my video. Can we put in the beginning of this tip, like a ta-da or something fun or a, I don't know what, a little whistle? Um, I bet she's rolling her eyes at me right now. Okay, guys, I'll be back in a little while. Okay, just a quick comment that I thought of. Um, generally lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. You don't have to do that. You could paint it a solid smooth color um, I like to weight it like this one's not quite as dark at the bottom, but to me it weights it So it already is sitting so like if this was sitting on a shelf oh, if I pick it up That's not gonna make sense. Well, I'll pick this one up if it's sitting on a shelf It already has a little bit more weight at the bottom. It's kind of a design thing. Um, I was a graphic designer for Gosh long time <laughs> 30 some years. I think all together probably more than that um Oh, and if you wanted to do a super smooth background, I love that tip I just did about 
moistening the canvas on the back with a little bit of water. Um, you almost might want an airbrush because like my, it's summertime here. My studio is really dry. I've got a fan blowing. I was really struggling to get any kind of smooth blend. But look how pretty those are and look how fun that is. And it already looks painterly. So if you're painting a sky, let some of those brush strokes show. Oh, here. Oh, I can't get it down right now. I've got a cloud video where I show that I even though I have a pretty smooth gradation of darker blue at the top to a lighter blue or gray at the bottom, I leave my brush strokes. It's just easier and I think it looks prettier. Okay, that was a little soapboxy. I'm gonna let these dry. I'm gonna work at Cali on Cali's uh, Cali Cat, the pet portrait I'm working on. And then these are surface dry, surface dried in with a hair dryer. But I think after I work on the portrait, have a little dinner, these will be nice and dry to put the traceable on and transfer my B image on it. I'll be back in a while, guys. Okay, I wanted to pop in because I've got a bit of a problem. I used black chalk pastel to scribble on the back of my traceable. And I wanted to use black so it shows up well on video. And I don't know if it's the black chalk pastel. I've had this happen once to me with black charcoal. Um, so I got a smear and I tried to lighten it up. I got a black smear. Well, you can see some of the um, black chalk or chalk pastel you know and, and I can clean it up pretty well with the kneaded eraser so I don't know what happened here but I had a big gray smear and it wouldn't pick up with the kneaded eraser <laughs> and then so I took this old gosh I think it used to be a little filbert and got it wet and then I was able to lighten it quite a bit but what it's doing is it's um, here can you see it's so the paint isn't cured so it's actually lifting up my background um, even though it's dried oh now I really lifted up the background there even though it dried you know I dried it with a hair dryer and I dried it um, or it sat for oh gosh an hour and a half while I ate dinner so now I'm starting to lift lift up the background so I may have to um, I didn't save my palette but I always leave out the paints I use for the background or for whatever in case I have to go back mix up some more color I can get it close and then paint the background so I was going to do all four of them because you can use this traceable several times you could use a different color pen um, but I think I'm going to do the next two with a lighter I'm going to print out another traceable do it with a lighter chalk pastel I think I'll be happier and then I'm thinking I'm going to have to fix that Okay, I just wanted to tell you that sometimes, I think it's the black pigment maybe, because I've had it happen both with charcoal and chalk pastel, but it doesn't happen, gosh, I've had it ha ha bleh. <laughs> sorry guys, I've had it happen twice, and this is the second time, but you know, it's not like all is lost, you might get really frustrated or something, but it is definitely fixable. Okay, I'm going to lighten up, I'm going to let this one dry. We'll paint on this one. I'm going to lighten it up and set up my palette. Alrighty, I'm going to use ultramarine blue green shade because I want to use it up. It's starting to get kind of old. I've got cad yellow and a little Mars black and a little titanium white. I'm going to mix a green because I, I want to use up the ultramarine. And then for the, so I'm going to do clover that looks kind of like this. This is the quinacridone. Some of it's straight up, some of it's mixed to a purple color, and then some of it has some of the yellow of the bees over it. So that's kind of what I'm thinking the, I don't know if I'll put that many clover flowers in there. Um, right now I'm gonna work on the grass. You could start with the bee first too. The bee will just be um, cad medium yellow, Mars black, titanium white, um, and either some white with some matte medium or, or some uh, mixing or zinc white to get the transparent wings. Um, what else do I want to say? Oh, I totally think it's, it's summer. It's one of the first hotter days 
it's more humid today in my studio and I bet these needed to sit overnight before I put um, the traceable transfer with the chart with the uh, chalk pastel on it because it's kind of stuck in there um, it's not not all is lost we can fix it it's just a little frustrating when that happens um, I totally think they needed to dry overnight so I have to remember that it's summer now and I probably have way too much well I want to mix up a decent amount of green here I want to, I think I want a yellow green. So that's why I had that big puddle of yellow and then didn't put much blue in there. And I think I'll just add some black to it or even some blue to it to make it darker. But the black will keep it a little warmer. Or you could add some of the, um, we could add some burnt sienna to it. We already used that in our painting. That would help unify. Try not to get too many colors out. I mean, you can of course use as many colors you want. Um, I've got a couple videos. Oh, there's a, I call it hippie hair. It's a Highland cow video where I used um, raw sienna, Prussian blue and white. And those are the only three colors I use. Really turned out nice. And it's, you know, of course it's really unified because there's only two colors or three colors if you count white in the painting. Okay, I think that's a pretty yellow green. I got pretty lucky there. Close enough. All right, I'm gonna time lapse from here, at least for a little bit, and I'll probably pop, pop back in when something occurs to me. So I started off with this, oh, I think that's a flat brush because it's a little, I, I never know. I need to look it up. I think flats are longer and brights are shorter. Um, oh, here, it might say right on here. Oh, it doesn't. It's a number 10. I think it would have worked just fine because I don't know if you can see that, but I can get a nice fine edge on it. But I hadn't washed the brush first. It was a brand new brush, so it was giving me trouble. And then, so I switched to this angle brush. Oh, I don't know what it is. It doesn't say on there. Oh, three eighths. And it was working pretty well, but I can even feel, oh, I don't know how to describe this. You'll know uh, if you start painting enough when you're paint. So this paint looks, I don't know if it looked, you can tell in the video, but this looks pretty smooth. And then this one looks lumpier. Um, and so it's kind of like, sliding instead of grabbing onto the canvas. It's just doing some weird things. Even though I've mixed it in with in here, I think this yellow is kind of old too. Um, but throw away old paint. I, mean, I think I complained about this in another video. I just need to toss this. <laughs> I get a little bit penny wise because I want to, you know, I want to buy more canvases. I want to buy, you know, I want to I want to pay the fee to get into, you know, assuming I get into a new gallery, I'll have to pay a fee. Um, to be part one of the members and now I'm gonna try or I'm gonna use this oh it's a Royal Lang nickel this one's a Royal Lang nickel I think I said that I think it's a number four but you can barely read it but I just want to pop in um, you'll feel when the paints old and just don't do as I do <laughs> do as I say just throw it away because sometimes it's not worth the the fight you know so two tips you know let let your backgrounds dry I need to remember now I need to let them dry at least overnight now and oh, how long can it take a painting to cure so it doesn't lift up? Um, I usually have good luck with overnight um, or a day later, 24 hours later. Um, I've heard some people say it can take a week for it to completely cure. Kind of like if you put latex paint on your walls, you don't hang anything on it for a couple weeks because it'll it's still a little, I don't know, it's not set, it's not cured. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the time lapse, guys. All 
Alrighty, I scraped off my ultramarine and put on some new ultramarine green shade. I can tell coming out of the coop, the coob, the tube, <laughs> that it's much creamier. Um, I put out some quinacridone, which is what we used, one of the colors we used in the background. It's right there. And then I put out some more yellow. Um, I don't know if the yellow was the problem. I also, it, let me know if you can hear the fans. I've got a couple of fans running because it's getting really hot in my studio. And then I'm going to use, it's sort of a misshapen filbert. I don't know if it was like a cat's tongue. Um, use any brush you have. You could, you could use this one. Um, it's a number eight Zen Royal Langnickel. And I think I'm going to start with the straight up quinacridone. So we're going to build up. Oh, I wanted to say two. I think there's three, in some places there's three layers, maybe even four layers of paint. Um, yellow is quite transparent, so greens tend to be quite transparent. And a lot of blues are are transparent. Oh, you can see a little bit of the pink coming through, which I don't mind. But if that bothers you guys, it needs another layer. But for me, the layers are nice because I keep going darker, lighter. You know, I can get a little wet on wet blending like I have right there. I just painted the bottom green. Oh, and you can see some of the pink. Um, I kind of like, you know, some of the lighter, lighter highlights. But I think the grass is good enough. We can always come back and add darks and lights where we think we need it a little bit later on. And I think, oh, what I started to say is, I think we'll put on this, this straight up quinacridone. Um, and then maybe add some darks and some lighters and then some yellows. So there'll be three or four layers. Layers are definitely your best friend in acrylics. You guys, I probably should make that a t-shirt. <laughs> People will go, what? I don't see, I don't, well, maybe I'll like that. It's kind of got, uh, can you see the jaggedy split edge? But actually maybe that'll be okay. It'll, it'll give us some happy, happy accidents. Okay, I'll be back after a bit if I think of some more comments. Let's take a quick look. So I've got the straight up quinacridone. Oh, um, I sprayed my palette with some, with a little bit of, misted it with a little bit of water. So it's starting to get dry. Um, I think I mentioned in this video. So this is um, ultramar ultramarine green shade. But when you mix it with the quinacridone, I got a really pretty purple. Here, I'll put a little more white in it. Isn't that pretty? Um, I mixed it in another video with a red and it, it gave me a nice Concord grape color. Um, ultramarine uh, blue red shade may work a little better. I don't have any in my studio. If you mix that with red. Anyway, I just wanted to show you what a pretty purple we got. Quinacridone even if you just want to buy the primary colors and save some money and then mix all your colors, I like quinacridone as another one. You just can't mix that color. It's gorgeous. Okay, so I've got a little bit of yellow in some of them, um, some purple, some pink, and some really, really light pink. So I'm going to work on the B and then we're going to see how we like it. We might be almost done. Oh, and I've painted, painted the sides. I think I showed you the bottom. So they're just messy, here, let me get closer. They're just messy little flowers, little clover. Kind of like my messy little poppies painting that I paint with a palette knife. 
you don't have to be super skilled with a brush. You could use any brush. If you use this like a little flat brush, you just draw the shape. And then I let the texture of the canvas help make the texture on the clover. But you can do it any way you like. Okay, I'm gonna paint the bee, guys. And then I'll be back probably at the end to say goodbye. What do you guys think? Here, I'll give you a screenshot in case you wanna paint it similar to this, similar colors. Um, the traceable's up on my website, annietro.com. I painted the bee um, smoother. My bees get really fuzzy, bumpy sometimes. Oh, sorry, I was looking. <laughs> my hand's shaking. Um, my bees get fuzzy, bumpy sometimes. Sometimes I paint them smoother. It's been quite a while since I've painted. Oh, that didn't dry as light as I thought. I like it. I painted the top too. Um, I mixed a little matte medium in with titanium white to make the transparency on the wings. Um, I was also trying to cover that um, chalk pastel that wouldn't come off. <laughs> Here, see these bees are fuzzier. This is a printout from my computer. What else do we wanna say? I really like the muted pink brown background. I like all the layers in the um, clover. Not sure if I like how white all that is. I think I like it a little softer normally. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comment. Oh, let me know, I've got the fan running. Let me know if you can hear the fan. What else? Oh, Freckles. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna pause this and show you what Freckles is doing. Okay, <laughs> can you see her eyes? She's standing like right behind me and if I didn't hear her flop down, I would have stepped on her. That is one relaxed, chill, and very fluffy. I think she's hot. It's really hot in my studio. Freckles, do you wanna say hi? She's just, oh, no, I really don't like this. <laughs> okay, I think I was getting ready to say goodbye. I'm gonna mist my palette and save it. I'm gonna try to paint uh, three more of these. I hope to give one of these away here. I'll probably give it away before you guys see this video on my Facebook page. Oh, that's a good place to follow me besides on YouTube is my Facebook page. Usually about the third week of the month I have a giveaway. All you have to do is enter. There's no strings attached. It's just, it's just a way to say thank you guys for supporting my art. Um, thank you, thank you for sending money through Venmo and PayPal. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me know what traceables you guys like and are downloading. Um, I'll try to do more. I'm thinking you guys like the bees since it's getting a lot of views. Great big happy art hugs, and I hope to chat with you soon. Bye, guys.